Hey everybody, welcome to What You're Reading, where librarians from around DeKalb County talk about the books that we are reading during quarantine. I am Fran and I am from the North Lake Library. I'm Nicole. I'm from the Harrison Crossing Library. I'm Mia. I'm from the Decatur Library. And I'm Angela from the County Line Ellawood Library. And this week we are talking about books that we are reading or have read pretty recently uh, that are retellings of classic literature. Um, some of us liked our books more than others, so this should be an interesting video. Um, the one that I read not too long ago is called Grendel's Guide to Love and War. Um, and this is a sort of reimagining of Beowulf. Um, which is really interesting. I don't know if you've ever read Beowulf. Oh, why would you if you weren't assigned it in school? It's not like a fun, good time read, but this is. This is very much like um, Grendel is the main character. His last name is Grendel. He is um, the antagonist, one of the antagonists in Beowulf and it tells it from his point of view. Um, but it's basically about pranks. He lives in a retirement community and some really loud people move in. And so he tries to prank them to get them to stop having really loud parties um, because the older people in the retirement community hate it. It's, I would, it's a lot of hijinks. It's funny. Uh, I'd recommend it to anyone who liked Perks of Being a Wallflower, anyone who likes any of Jeff Sentner's books, especially John Green. Um, if you're looking for a book that's funny and has a male protagonist, those can be kind of hard to find. Um, I really recommend this one. And if you've read Beowulf or have some sort of idea of what Beowulf is about, you'll pick up on all these little things as you're reading it, but it's definitely not necessary to understanding the book at all. It's it's just a lot of fun. Um, that one, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I'll double check. It doesn't seem like we have that in any uh, digital formats, but you can do contact free pickup. I checked it is at all four of our branches that we just listed. <laughs> all four of us have a copy of it sitting on our shelf right now that we would love for you to check out. Um, so come do contact free pickup with us. I thought it sounded familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I am one of the people who read a classic retelling and didn't necessarily like it. Um, I read Ian Dasher's much Ado About Mean Girls, if you guys can see that. Sorry, there's a little glare on my phone. Uh, it is basically like, I'm surprised that Mean Girls uh, is as old as it is and still in popular culture today. Uh, it is celebrating its 16th, 17th year <laughs> anniversary. Yep. Yeah, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> um, and so basically what it is, is it is a retelling of Mean Girls, but written uh, like a Shakespeare play. And it's really cool because um, it's written in verse. And so if you've ever read Shakespeare, you know that his plays tend to use, you know, rhyming couplets, iambic pentameter, things like that. Uh, and this particular book does that. It's written out like a play from different uh, perspectives. And it starts off with uh, Katie going to school for the first time and her parents seeing her off to public school. Because uh, as you know, she's been homeschooled her whole life. Uh, and yeah, it was, a, it was a funny book. It was definitely what's considered like teen lit, like teen, you know, chick lit. Um, if you like Shakespeare, if you have enjoyed Mean Girls, definitely pick this one up. It's for grades seven through nine. Um, and what's great about it is that you already know the story. So reading it like it's, you know, a Shakespeare play in verse, you're able to pick up more of the subtleties, especially if you've seen the movie in the past. Um, but it is available for contact-free pickup uh, through uh, our libraries. It's a physical book. And as of right now, I do not believe we have any digital copies, but if you want to do contact-free, you can put that on hold. All right, over to you, Mia. <laughs> what you didn't say is that you didn't really like it because it was in verse. <laughs> it was in verse and I didn't like it. <laughs> I love books in verse, but I'm one of the, I know it's not a common, common love. Uh, I did Pride and it is by E.B. the Boy and it is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I like, I really enjoyed the book, um, though I like it more as a standalone, not as a comparison to Pride and Prejudice because Pride and Prejudice is like my, one of my favorite books of all time and I felt like the character, the main character wasn't 
um, Zuri wasn't quite like um, Lizzie Bennett. So that kind of, but it has a lot of um, shout outs to Pride and Prejudice and names. Um, it's just great. It's a fun, light read. Um, and basically it's a neighborhood um, where Zuri lives and um, the Darcy boys move in next door. And she is more at a low income poverty level, whereas he is very, very wealthy. And so um, there's of course preconceptions about what each one has of the other, but um, if you've read Pride and Prejudice, you know that everything works out great. Um, she has, but they have all the sisters. There's a lot, it was just, it's just a real fun, good read. Her writing is very easy to read too, which I liked. It just flows. I had not read, um, I don't think I've ever read anything um, by her. I know she's written a lot. So I really, now I kind of want to go back and read more of what she wrote. And we have it in so many formats. <laughs> I know this one you got everywhere. We've got it in the physical book. We've got audio book. We've got ebook. It's also on Hoopla and audiobook and ebook. And all of them have at least um, one copy available. So um, hopefully you'll check it out. It is also um, one of the, the 2020 um, Peach Awards, or is it called 20? 20, 2021. 2020-2021. Yeah, the ones you can vote for now. So I will put the voting link down below. Um, yeah. Please get votes out. For yes, this. this is one of the, my, I really liked it. This is one of the good ones. All right, I like Angela. that one too. Okay, so I didn't care much for mine, but that doesn't mean it's not a good book. I read or listened to actually on audio, Anna Kay and it's available on our overdrive and I don't know if it's on Hoopla, I didn't check, but I know it's I'll on check. overdrive. It'll be we have copies available um, for curbside pickup. And I never read Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. So that's the book you're, you're comparing it to. However, I think, you know, that's one of those books that if I read it, it was because I was forced to in high school. <laughs> So this one is great. It, to me, it's more of a comparison to crazy rich Asians, Asians in that you have a culture of uber successful uh, families and you know their hijinks and everything is not what I would consider my real world life to be. Um, but I would recommend this one for older teens. Uh, it, it, it does have uh, language in there. There's uh, sex and language um, in the book. So it's not something I would recommend for a younger teen audience. I just, it just wasn't my fancy. <laughs> um, so, but like I said, if you're a fan of Crazy Rich Asians, if you've read the book or, or you've seen the, the movies, this is to me the young adult comparison to that. Um, you know, so that's where I'll go with that. I read the Anna Karenina and Oprah did it for one of her first Oprah book clubs and you did read you it. Like it? <laughs> did you like it? Um, I thought the writing is great, but I the character the main character just bothered me. Um, yeah, so I can't say that I really yeah. loved it. I read it in high school when I was being pretentious and they let us pick from a list. So I picked like the thickest book on the list and it was Anna Karenina because I just about to say. Like, it's, over. Really, it's really thick and yeah. I, it was depressing. I mean, maybe as a high schooler, I just was, I'm like, I hope they don't pull too much from Anna Karenina because that is not like a, it's <laughs> nothing I would hand to a teen. That's not a fun, good time read. It's not even like a relatable, sad read. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of weird yeah, adult problems is. that even as an adult, I'm like, okay like that's not my life um yeah sorry for all you Tolstoy fans out there yeah <laughs> <laughs> making fun of my favorite book um but I hope that you know you did find something that sounded interesting to you even if they weren't the same things that sounded or ultimately were interesting to us um check those out through contact free pickup or for the ones that have e-versions we will have the links below as well as where you can vote for pride um if you are interested in voting in the peach awards so thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time <laughs>